Hello guys. So I am starting a new playlist where I will be uploading the videos on implementing neural networks from scratch in Python. So I will start from very basics of a single neuron implementation. Then uh, we will build a single hidden layer and then we will go on adding multiple hidden layers and in the entirety we will build a artificial neural network and it will be completely from scratch in Python. So when I say from scratch in Python, uh, I will not make use of any libraries like TensorFlow, Keras or PyTorch etc. Okay. So of course I will be making use of a NumPy, a NumPy library wherever it is required and we will implement a neural network end to end. So when I say end to end, I will show you how to implement a single neuron. Uh, in case of multiple hidden layers and the output layer, how to implement a forward pass and also we will learn how to implement the backward propagation and how to update the weights everything in its entirety in python from scratch okay so most of you might think uh, that when we have the libraries such as keras tensorflow pytorch etc uh, which takes care of the inner workings of the neural network what is the need for us to implement it from scratch so the reason is uh, we will never learn the internal details how the stuffs work internally and we will never understand the inner complications and issues that we face while using the libraries right so unless and until we explore them ourselves by implementing it so if you guys are interested in this kind of learning uh, you can subscribe to my channel and follow this playlist okay so let's get started uh, so in, in this video uh, i will start from very basics uh, where I will be implementing working of a single neuron. Okay, so here I will consider four inputs x1, x2, x3, x4. You can see here these four inputs will be passed on to a single neuron as I am showing it here in the figure, and we will have four weights associated for each of these inputs. So, if you can see in this figure, uh, I have divided the neuron into two parts uh, one to show you the first step. So, here this is the first step where it will have some linear transformation from considering the weights and the inputs okay and after having the linear transformation done the output of the linear transformation will be passed on to a activation function which would be ideally a non linear function and the output of that activation function will be the output from this particular neuron okay so this is how the setup will be so i will create a list called as weights and I will have four elements in it w1, w2, w3, w4. Of course, these will be some numbers randomly selected. Okay. And inputs also a list x1, x2, x3, x4. Again, these four will be some randomly selected numbers. So, in our first step, we will implement this particular linear transformation equation. Okay. And call this as z. And this particular thing b here, it's actually a bias term. So, you can see here from the neural network diagram. So, we will add a bias to each neuron in the network, right? So, that is the bias term B here. And then we will store this linear transformation output into a variable called as C. This is small z, small alphabet letter z. And then we will pass on this value to a function. This will be generally a non linear function. And we call it as activation function. And there are many activation functions like sigmoid, softmax, tan h, relu, leaky relu, etc. In this video, I will show you how we can implement relu and pass the value z to this and then get the required output from the neuron. Okay. So let's get started. So here I have opened up a PyCharm editor uh, where I will be doing most of my work related to this playlist. Okay. So here, as I told you, I will create variables called as weights and I will give some random numbers to it. Let me give 0 0.2, 0 0.55, minus 0 0.1 and minus 0 0.2. So these are some random numbers. So there is no logic actually in selecting these numbers. Okay, I have just put randomly. And then inputs. So these will represent the actual features x1, x2, x3, x4 as we have seen in that figure. So for this let me give some numbers so 12 14 
5 maybe and then 15 okay so these are my inputs and these are the weights associated for each of those inputs in order to calculate the output of a neuron so now we have this we will need the bias term also right so let me create a variable called as bias and let's have a value of 1 to it for now okay so just for the sake of implementation how we can implement it i have assigned a value 1 so what i'll do i will separate out the neuron components and the input components so i will group them together so these things weights and biases are my neuron components right neuron components and these are my input features okay input features so in this way we will have the cleaner version of the code so for that sake i have just separated them out okay so now we will come to neuron calculations so initially the first step is linear transformation right linear transformation so i will store it in a variable z and it will be weights into inputs correct so weights of 0 into inputs of 0 correct so if you take this as w1 w2 w3 w4 and this as x1 x2 x3 x4 so what i am doing here w1 into x1 w2 into x2 w3 into x3 w4 into x4 since indexing starts from 0 i am considering it as a 0th element so that's the funda here okay so plus i just copy this three more times so that i'll just need to change the index value plus and then plus finally we will add a bias term to it so 0 0 1 1 2 2 3 3 so for the sake of clarity i will add a pair of brackets here so that it will be clear which part we are doing first and then when we are adding the bias term okay so this is the first step in a neuron computation that is linear transformation so once we do this we will pass this z value to a function called as activation function and in this case i will be implementing a simple redo okay so for that let me first define a function here define relu input will be a number so the relu is implemented as max of 0 comma x so whichever is maximum it will return that particular value so this is relu implementation okay so if you haven't seen my activation functions video you can go back to that particular deep learning playlist and watch these implementations okay so let me just type rectified linear unit function okay so this is about relu so now what i will do i will pass this z to that relu and store the output in a variable called as a which stands for activation generally okay so relu of z so now what i will do i just want to show you guys how the output looks like so what will be the value of z and what will be the value of a so in other sense what's the value after applying linear transformation and then what's the value after applying non-linear transformation so I'll just give it a heading here non-linear transformation in particular it's redo okay so rectified linear unit okay so redo stands for rectified linear unit. i'm just coming to get out for better readability okay so now let me just print out the values value of value after linear transformation is so there is a typo here its transformation is okay so i will print z here and then and after applying a redo the value is so which is our output actually okay so let me say uh, after applying relu function redo activation output of the neuron is so i'll just say format i'll pass in z and a 
So that's it. So if I execute it, we should see the value. So let me just get this up here. So Z value is 6.95 and after applying ReLU activation, the value remains same because ReLU is max of 0, comma, the water value is passed to it. Okay. So if we change the bias value to let's say minus minus 10 here, okay, just to demo you how ReLU works. And then now if I execute it, the output of the linear transformation that is Z is minus 4.04. And if we pass this particular value to ReLU, the output would be 0 because between 0 and minus 4, the max value is 0. Okay. So, this is how you can actually implement a simple neuron. So, there you have it. Uh, we have successfully implemented it. Okay. So, in my next video, I will add multiple neurons here and let us call it as a layer, one hidden layer in a neural network. Okay. So, probably we will have 3 or 4 neurons in that particular layer and then we will implement it again similar to what we have done here. Okay. So, that is it for this video guys. If you are enjoying my, my videos and my content and if you are learning something out of it, please give it a thumbs up and if you have not subscribed to my channel, please do subscribe. Thanks for and all. See you all in the next video. Happy learning. Bye bye.